Hey everyone and welcome to Nerding IO. I'm JD and today we're going to be looking at LangChain again, specifically testing dynamic data. Uh, we'll be looking at the LangSmith dashboard and monitoring how that works. So before we jump in, I just wanted to bring up Ever Efficient AI. This is our AI automation agency. Just wanted to say a huge thanks. We've been getting featured on multiple different AI tool uh, directories so thank you again all right so let's dive into it so what we're going to be looking at is if you go to the langsmith cookbook they have a testing example and specifically this dynamic data so you're going to want to go uh, clone this or download this if you haven't been following along in the series uh, please go back to the beginning and, and then that way you can installing Smith. So what we're going to do is once we have this downloaded, we're going to run a Jupyter Notebook and actually launch this. That's what I have running in the background here. And it'll take us right to our data set. So again, it has some prerequisites. You need to have a LangChain API key. You want to make sure that you have everything pip installed, including pandas and uh, your open AI key. So What's interesting about this is we're going to take a data set. Uh, this is the Titanic data set that's open source that you can just download here. It's a CSV. But what's really cool is we're taking different questions and then we're actually using data frame uh, functions to, to figure out our answer. And that's really cool because not only are we using snippets from Python, but we can actually use things where it says even storing API requests and search arguments, which is pretty awesome. So all we need to do to get this running is we're just going to go ahead and uh, start running our, uh, our each line item here. So we'll go ahead and put our questions in. It said that now we're creating a data set. So I do want to point out one thing. I always change this. I make sure I, I add a dot m. Um, I like that better than than actually putting everything in the the command line and exporting these, but whatever you like to do. So I've added this that way it'll load a .m file. The next what we'll do is we'll actually start building our data set. So we can see that our data set is going to be this dynamic Titanic S, uh, CSV, and we're uh, just going to be creating it and then loading like looping through and loading each. Uh, question as well as the code that we want to implement in order to get the answer for that question. So let's go ahead and run this. Next we're going to define our Q&A system. So again we're going to be taking this Titanic path for the CSV. We're going to go ahead and do a pandas read and then we're going to start importing the partials. So when we're importing these partials we're actually using the API, the OpenAI GPT-4 with a temperature of zero, zero, which means that it's the most accurate. And we want to make sure that when we're dealing with the data, there's no room for flexibility. So let's go ahead and continue. And now that we have this information run, what we're going to do is we will actually execute or invoke our chain. We're going to say our input, then we're going to ask it a question, and then we're expecting it to give us this answer. And in order to get this answer, it'll actually uh, run these Python snippets, which again is really awesome. So let's go ahead and run, invoke this and we'll see what we get. All right, so as you can see, we got a new answer. So it's still saying the, the amount of passengers. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at how we can actually trace this. So if we go ahead and open our lane chain, uh, and I'm just using the same project as last time, so the tracing cookbook tutorial, and you can see this execution is the latest execution that we have. And so what we can do is look at the, the chain of events here. And this is really interesting as we go through, not only does, is it telling us things like our tokens, our latency, but it'll actually go through how it's doing the observations. So this is what it's observing, the input, move 
this over here. Uh, the number of passengers determined by counting the number of rows in the data frame. So it's saying the action, and then it's looking for the input, the action input of the, the Python, uh, Python that we're going to run. Now we're going into our OpenAI, uh, and we're defining what we want to look, and we're saying that we are working in the pandas data frame in Python. The data frame is uh, function name is df, and then we're going to be using the tools to answer a question. We're also using the Python uh, REPL AST, and that our we're trying to answer the question. Think about what we're going to do. Take an action, and then uh, the action input and then our observation. It also has a result of the print and it's actually looking at the data set that we put in, right? Which is really interesting. So then we're actually looking at our tool, which is another piece of lang chain, which is our, our Python, our Python REPL AST. And then we're looking at the input, which is the function that we defined. We have our output and then we're going back to our uh, chain and it's saying the thought right this is it actually determining what its thought is the number of passengers its action the function the other obs the new observation and then it's telling the output I know the final answer and the final answer is there were 891 passengers on the Titanic And so here is our final run. You can also look at things like feedback if there is any, and then the metadata that's associated with it. Cool, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our notebook and we can actually look through the run evaluation. So we're gonna continue running our script. We can just keep using the play button. So what we're doing is we're looking for the custom criteria evaluation chain and uh, looking at the prediction and the reference. And so you can see the, the evals right here. So let's go ahead and start running this evaluation. Now we're in our configuration. We're gonna be looking for correctness. We've got our LLM, which is GPT-4. And then we're gonna be running it on our data set. All of this is which we defined above that uh, the configuration for the data set on um, the Titanic uh, CSV. So let's go ahead and run this again. And now it is running. It is giving you a result for a public project. Um, when I clicked it, this link didn't actually work. We'll give it a try though. Uh, yeah, so at this time it. Oh, it does. Okay, cool. Uh, great. So this is actually giving a evaluation. So how many children under the age of 18 survived? It's taking us through this entire chain, which we just kind of looked at. And we're able to actually see again, the inputs that we are uh, looking at. So again, this is a data frame Python code snippet that we're actually running. All right, and so when the last thing that we can do is we can run a, a reevaluate at a later time. And so what this means is that uh, it's safe to say that it, it hasn't, like any of the data hasn't changed, but if we had more data coming in, we'd be able to reevaluate what that is or rerun, uh, reuse the existing data. So we're going to go ahead and run this. So again, we are putting together some uh, Python snippets. So we're looking at the, if the data tape, we're basically mimicking the fact that we want extra data. So we're kind of like mocking this data out by essentially duplicating the amount of records. Then we're gonna go ahead and change. And then we will run our chain and then we'll look at our chain results as they uh, run. 
All right, so now that this is run, it's telling us to review the results again. So if we go back to our lang chain, what we're gonna do this time is we're actually gonna click this uh, data button, and this is what represents our data sets. So right here, we can say that, or see that this is our uh, Titanic CSV2. We can see that we have the run from the previous run. This is showing all the, the, the runs and the correctiveness basically on this data set. And again, it's taking us through our agent execution into our LLMs our tool and again showing us the in this case the amount of passengers on the titanic based on the data frame so if we go back or let's just click our data set so if we go back to our data set we see a new test count we can again look at this you can see it's run about 10 times if we go back to our data set though, and we actually look at the examples, these are all the examples that we're pulling in. We can actually see the test count of how many times this is run. We could even add an example here based on our, our input and our outputs. And uh, we can export or actually initiate a new test straight from Langsmith. So we don't actually need to do all of it within our data set. So that takes us to the end of this video. Uh, I, what we went over today was building a dynamic data set with the Titanic CSV in Langsmith and also went through how to trace and look at the execution of the agent as well as looking at the tool, the, this Python tool which allows us to actually run the Python snippets. So hopefully it was, that was helpful. If you'd like us to uh, do anything specific or you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Remember to like and subscribe, and happy nerding!